oil price has dropped from over 100 US dollar per barrel to less than 50 US dollar per barrel just within a year. What are the reasons for this, Professor Betzüge? As in every other market, the oil price is determined by supply and demand. So supply has been much uh, larger than expected on the global level, basically and mostly due to developments in the United States. And demand, uh, on the other hand, has been weaker than expected. So uh, together, those two effects have depressed the, the oil price. On top, the uh, additional uh, supply that uh, is coming from the United States has undermined uh, market power potential for OPEC countries, uh, which puts an additional pressure on the oil price and taken together you have uh, the solution to the equation of the low oil price. Does this mean that fossil fuels are more abundant than many have thought? Yes, I think uh, it's a clear indication now for the example of oil that we have abundant uh, reserves that can be profitably extracted and uh, this, will, uh, this will continue to be the case for certainly the next decades. And what does this mean for the global fight against climate change? Well, actually, it's bad news uh, because uh, the fact that we are having, as mankind, uh, such an abundant uh, supply of fossil fuels means that we can actually extract them and burn them, uh, thereby contributing to um, the, uh, increasing CO2 emissions in, in, in the world. In a certain sense, I'd say uh, the abundance of the fossil fuels is the second inconvenient truth. The first inconvenient truth uh, being that there is man-made climate change uh, driven partly by uh, greenhouse gas, em gas emissions uh, from CO2. Then is it at all possible to reach the ambitious climate targets? That's, uh, I'd say there is a technological, uh, an economic and a political dimension to answering that question. On the technology side, basically we already know today uh, technologies uh, which would allow us to uh, reduce our consumption of fossil fuels uh, uh, very rapidly. Uh, economically, we know that doing so would entail uh, additional cost, but that those additional costs are certainly not prohibitive for the world at large. So this basically then boils down to the political dimension, uh, and the political dimension is the question to who is actually uh, uh, paying those additional costs. So, and that's the distributional issue that uh, uh, the national governments find so hard to solve. Germany praises itself much for its so-called Energiewende, but what does the Energiewende actually contribute to the global efforts to reduce the CO2 emissions? Directly, uh, one, has to, one has to acknowledge that uh, German energy policy is actually not contributing um, much to the reduction of global greenhouse gas emissions, if at all. Um, because uh, over the last decade or so, Germany has barely reduced uh, its CO2 emissions. Uh, and of course, uh, the question of uh, phasing out nuclear power plants uh, plays a role uh, in that, because uh, of course, uh, not using nuclear and using coal instead leads, of course, to an increase in, uh, in CO2 emissions. Now, Indirectly, however, uh, the German uh, uh, energy policy of the past uh, uh, one or two decades has certainly contributed to reducing um, uh, the cost of uh, alternative energies, for example, wind or solar energies. And the fact that they are available now at much lower cost uh, makes it easier uh, for, uh, for countries in the world to engage in more ambitious uh, CO2 mitigation strategies. So indirectly, one could argue that German energy policy actually contributes uh, to the global efforts uh, to fight uh, climate change.